What's going on guys? Matt Percaro from the 203K Way and I have a really special video for you today answering a question that I get more than anything about real estate investing and about getting into the 203K Way strategy. The biggest fear people have is finding deals in their market. Everybody feels like their market is too expensive. There's no deals in their market. Their realtors tell them that they're that you know you can't find a deal in this market. You need to pay for over asking. Um, you know distressed properties don't exist. They're too expensive. All these different things that are actually just limiting you from the truth. And the truth is that you can get a live and flip deal easily in any market. Okay, using the two hundred three k strategy, doing an owner occupant flip on your first deal opens so many doors for you, and it takes you completely out of the competition that you may have been struggling around for years. Right? If you if you come from the wholesaling game, you know how hard it is to get you know to get into wholesaling. How many people? Um, you know, call a distressed seller and the distressed seller tells them that they get a ton of yellow letters in the mail. They get cold called, they get texted day after day because they're on these lists that just get pounded and over and over and over again. The problem with this guys, in addition to it being super saturated and everybody being a wholesaler these days is, um, the, these people don't want to sell, okay? They, they, most of these people, they really don't want to sell. You have to convince them that they want to sell, okay? And today I'm going to talk about a little bit about um, how to get properties from people that actually want to sell and why you're in a very, very strategic position to actually offer them the most money for their property and still make an excellent deal on it. So, why live and flip deals are easily found in any market. That's what I'm going to talk about today in this in this video. So uh, number one, we're going to go over these three uh, these three points um, quickly, and then I'm going to do a quick quick uh, quick deep dive in each one. Number one, sweet spot. Okay, there's a specific sweet spot that you're in that nobody else in your market is in. Okay, number two, you could pay more than cash investors, okay? And that leads us right into number three, which is comfort zone is greater than a flipper's comfort zone. And these are all different reasons why it is so much easier for you to find deals in a market than a, a, a cash fix and flipper or uh, you know a wholesaler that's trying to find a deal, okay? So the first one here is sweet spot, all right? The sweet spot is something that I think a lot of people miss on the 203k way strategy okay the reason they miss it is because a lot of people are thinking like investors but they're not thinking about the they're not thinking they're only thinking in the short term they're not thinking about the long term flippers are doing things on the short term they need to make short quick gains and there's a lot of moving parts that go into that they have to close twice on a property they have to market it they need to list it they need to pay their investor a high amount of capital in order to do these flips to do volume when you're doing a live-in flip you don't have all of these extra expenses that these other flippers have. So when I talk about sweet spot, I want you guys to see basically where you are on the scale of where to find a deal, okay? So up here, up at the top, you have retail buyers, right? Johnny and Sally, they want to move into a property. They just had a baby. They want to move out of their apartment and they want to go into a house and they don't care if it's a deal. They just want to go into a house that they love because, you know, they love the garage and they love the way the front window looks and they like the front porch and they buy strictly on emotion. Okay. Emotion. All right. Then down here, you have the flippers and the wholesalers. Now these guys are trying to get the absolute best deal based on numbers. They are looking only at numbers. That's the only thing that, that they care about and their numbers are everything. They make or break your deal because everything they're doing is basically accounting. They're running a business down here, okay? Because they're running a business, they have so many extra costs. Now, if you're just trying to get started in real estate investing, you're just trying to break your way into this game, 
you don't need to run a business yet. You just need to get that first one that is going to eventually grow you into a business. But on the first one, we wanna make it easy for you. We wanna take you out of the competition with the retail competition, and we wanna take you out of the competition with wholesalers and flippers. Now, wholesalers and flippers, they typically can't get things off of the MLS, the MLS being where the real estate agents list all these properties, right? It's anything that hits Zillow, basically. Anything that hits Zillow is going to be something that already is not priced at a point where wholesalers and flippers can profit. Take my word for it, as a flipper, things that are listed do not work for me, right? I, I need to sift through hundreds of deals before I find one on the MLS or on Zillow because they are just always listed at a higher price. They are going to basically a close to retail market, okay? The hope of these bank owned foreclosures and, and you know these distressed as is properties, the hope is that they get a retail buyer, but the reality is they're not gonna get a retail buyer. What they're getting is they're getting renovation loan buyers. Now that's where you guys fit in, okay? Renovation loan buyers, you are able to pay way more. You're able to pay way more than wholesalers. You're still not gonna pay as much as retail because you're making a smart decision. You don't wanna be a schmuck and pay top dollar for a property. You're trying to start your real estate investing career, start your career in building wealth, building generational wealth for your family, and you do that by creating equity in the byway of doing a 203k loan or a live in flip or a renovation loan. Now, because you don't have the wholesaling fee that goes into it, you don't have to close twice on a property, you don't have to stage the property, you don't have um, you know uh, a hard money costs involved, you don't have um, you know you don't have to pay commission twice. Because you don't have all those things, you're able to pay a little more than these wholesalers and flippers and still pay less than the retail buyers because you're looking for renovation worthy properties, okay? That's what I talk about when I talk about the sweet spot. You're not, you when you look for properties on the market, on the MLS, there's gonna be a bunch of properties out there that are priced too high for wholesalers and flippers, but are also way too much work for a retail buyer. Again, these retail buyers, they wanna move right in, they have a baby, they wanna, they have a family, they're trying to move in, they're not trying to, but you know, even if you have a family, there's just a different market, okay? You're trying to make a good financial decision. You're willing to put in the work and that's where you lie. So because of that, you are not competing with these guys. You're not competing with these guys. Now, word of advice, if you find yourself getting into bidding wars with wholesalers or flippers, or if you find yourself getting into bidding wars with retails, retail buyers, you're probably not looking at the right properties, okay? So take that as a word of advice. That is a, a big red flag, okay? So the next thing we had, the next thing we had was, if I remember correctly, was you don't have to pay cash, right? Cash versus financing. Guys, if flippers could flip off of the financing that first time home buyer loans get, it would it would it would there would be no competition for you. It would, I mean, you would you would be getting eaten alive by flippers. But the reality is that banks don't give uh, home they don't give terms like that to a flipper because they know flippers don't have the um, emotional commitment to a property. Now, being a live-in flipper living in the property, just that aspect of you living in the property, even if it's only a year, even if you don't let plan on living there long term, if you leverage that live in that live in capability, the bank rewards you immensely because they know that people that live in a property are well more likely to pay the mortgage on it than people that if they didn't live in the property. Think of it this way. This is all a response to 2008. Back in 2008, a lot of people were buying properties using basically like financing to buy investment, uh, financing to buy investment properties um, using like homeowner occupied financing levels, very cheap rates. Um, you were you were able to only put like five percent down, and banks were lending like crazy. 
okay? And what was happening was people were buying up a ton of properties, expecting that it's gonna appreciate through the roof and that they're just gonna make money. So they there was no limit to what they could buy and they were getting cheap money and a lot of it. So they were just buying up properties like crazy. Now when 2008 hit, what do you think the people did that had a portfolio of properties that they couldn't pay the bills on, right? They didn't pay the bills on, if they could pay the bill on any property, what property are they gonna pay the bill on? They're gonna pay the bill on the property that they live in, okay? They're not gonna pay on the properties that they don't live in. So all those investment properties went belly up and all the foreclosures that happened were all on investment properties, second homes, third homes, stuff like that. So because of that, they reward you with that financing capability. They give you the low down payment, right? The 3.5% down, they give you the 3.5% interest rate, okay? They're giving you prime, prime rates because you're living there. Now, cash investors, okay, here's a quick tip. Cash isn't really cash, guys. Anyone that thinks that fix and flippers are sitting on millions and millions of dollars of their own money that they use over and over and over again is BS, okay? Because the reality is, is no real flipper is not using other people's money. Other people's money is the number one concept in business that people need to understand. No good business person uses other people's money. It's, it's, and it's not even for reasons that they don't wanna risk their own money. It's for reasons of you can't run a business unless you are using financed capital, unless you are using other people's capital. Now, so cash is still not really cash. Cash actually has probably about a 10% interest rate on it because people that are willing to lend them money on something that they know isn't a, you know, isn't a live-in flip. They know this property isn't gonna be you know, a, a, a property that's near and dear to their heart. You are gonna, you are gonna still get people that are gonna pay, you know, looking, that are looking for a high interest back, okay? So the reality is, is that you are competing, if you compete with, if you're competing with fix and flip investors, you're always gonna be able to pay more. You're gonna be able to pay more because your interest rate is way lower than what they're paying, okay? So that's another thing I tell people. If, if you're competing, if you're competing with cash investors in some of these markets and you know you're getting, and people ask me, oh, well, I can't compete with a cash investor with a 203K loan. You shouldn't be competing with cash investors or a 203K loan. If you are, you're in a tough market, but keep offering because these guys aren't everywhere. They all can't do that. They can't also do it forever. You gotta keep steadfast. You're in the right market, but these guys are, they'll also never close. That's another thing. You wanna look at properties that you have competition with that are in cash investors and keep aiming at those properties because eventually they're going to stick because these guys cannot survive paying market prices or MLS prices at a 10% interest rate on their money, okay? This is really how it works. There's just no other way around it, okay? So the last thing that I wanted to show you guys about why you can find these deals in any market <clears throat> is because of comfort zone. Okay, comfort zone, happy. You could be happy at a much different rate of return, percent return than a fix and flipper, okay? Fix and flippers are usually looking to make, they're usually looking to make, you know, 10% profit, right? But to make 10% profit, they usually need to buy properties at 60 cents on the dollar. Okay, they need to buy their properties at 60%, okay? Because they're only looking to make that 10%. What they don't tell you is there's about 30% in here of holding, co this holding costs, rehab costs, holding costs, rehab costs, um, you know, taxes. There, there's so much in here that you don't have to worry about, okay? You don't have to worry about the rehab portion. You're not coming out of pocket with it, okay? You're, 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 you're financing it into the 203K loan. You don't have to worry about, um, about, about the transfer taxes. You don't have to worry about commissions. So that is cutting in half. Your, your, your numbers are strictly based on where it makes sense for you based on where you run the numbers. If you run the numbers, if you run the numbers on a property, and you know, you're buying, you're buying a house for 100K. Okay, let's just use easy numbers. You have to put 50K into it. You're all in for 150K. You're gonna be, uh, you're gonna, it's gonna be worth 200K when it's done. 
all right? And that's gonna put you at a 50K prof, uh, equity profit, right? So now you're sitting on 50K of equity, you do a cash out refinance, you pull some of that out, you do a home equity line of credit, you're able to utilize that 50K, you go, you buy another deal. Now, on a regular fix and flip, that 150K versus the 200K, guys, there is so much in here, there is so much in here, in between here, there's, that, that, that a fix and flipper is gonna have to pay in order to, in order to make money on this deal. So they are going to have to, you know, they're going to have to market it. They're going to have to pay commissions twice. They're going to have to pay transfer taxes. They're going to have to stage it, market it. They're going to do all these things that are going to eat into that profit. You're not getting that 50K equity. This, this deal for you might be easy because that 50K works for you. But for a regular fix and flipper, if they come out with 20K, it's not going to be worth it to them. It's just not worth it to them. So these are the things that people need to understand it's so much easier to find these deals in these markets, guys. It's so much easier to find these deals in these markets because you are not playing in the same sandbox as a fix and flipper. You're pay, playing in, you're not playing in the same sandbox as a retail buyer. You're playing in a very unique sandbox, which is MLS deals that are distressed. People often say deals go to MLS to die, right? And as is, an, you know, a, a distressed property goes to the MLS to die, right? That means that no, no wholesalers, no, no, uh, super, uh, super busy uh, fix and flippers are are out there to, um, to to pick up the deal before it hits the market. And retail buyers aren't going to touch it because they don't want a property that they can't move right into. So. You want to look for these deals and they're everywhere, guys. And there's no, there's no, I shouldn't say no. There's much lower competition than if you were fighting against a deal, uh, you know, a wholesale deal from five different fix and flippers. And it's, uh, you know, different than a retail deal where you get into a bidding war with a retail buyer that's looking to move in. So if you focus only on these distressed properties, not only are you getting a good deal that you're going to build equity into, you have less competition there because people aren't playing in that sandbox. Guys, I'm Matt Percaro from the 203K Way. I hope this really reveals to you on, on why this, 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 this strategy is just so much more effective and such a better use of your time than a lot of other different ways to get started in the real estate investing game. Hope to see you on the inside and we'll talk again soon.